good introduction music for Mark Mitchell. In the blue court and in the red corner. <laughs> morning to both of you. Morning, morning, Mike. Morning, Nessie. G'day, Mitch. G'day, Mike. Mike, I do love it, mate. You need to get to the 21st century. I mean, do people still buy CDs? I reckon they buy CDs, don't they? they there's a... I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd listen to that. Finally, it's good to hear some good music on your show. But, you like this? Is this you? Is it? This a bit of you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Head -banger, headbanger Stewie from the Bay. <laughs> the headbanger you can vote for. You, you, you don't use Facebook, you buy CDs. Whoa, what are your kids saying when they come home from university? Yeah, but he, li but he li loves McLarens, though, so say no more. Oh, yeah, that is um, right. Have, have you got a couple of McLarens in the garage, Mike? So I like a McLaren. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a McLaren. Now, yeah, if you can afford them. Uh, James Shaw. Let's start with uh, Hushla. I'll start with you, Mark. Is First of all, is, is it a resignation offence? Look, I think that it's getting close to that. I like James on a personal level, um, but I think that he has shown extremely poor judgment uh, in terms of the decision around the funding for the school and for a whole range of reasons. But I remember marching in Queen Street um, back in, uh, at the start of this government's term because they were threatening charter schools. And Vanguard in particular was a school that was my, kids from my electorate were going to that were failing in the mainstream and they were getting picked up and excelling at Vanguard. And then it's a huge slap in the face when the government completely departs from its only ideologically driven uh, policies and starts funding a green school with 50 students. Put on top of that the fact the Treasury said that um, it hasn't even got full private school registration. Yeah. Uh, it would be completely inappropriate giving them funding and actually the provincial growth fund is the wrong fund to use. Can you, Stuart, divorce yourself enough from the coalition partner to see this? Do you reckon it's a resignation offence or not? No, I don't think it's a resignation offence. But, you know, you talk about resignation offences, Mike. I mean, Judith Collins had to apologise in Parliament because the general manager of the National Party put an ad which was deemed to be misleading. I think that's a resignation offence. James, like Mitch, James is a, is a really good guy. He has very strong values. He's admitted that he got this wrong. Uh, and, you know, that's an important part of his rehabilitation. He admitted he made a mistake. He's the first politician I see. Everyone, first of all, everyone seems to like him. I don't think there's a single person who doesn't like him. Second of all, he goes, I feel really terrible or something like that. You never hear politicians say that. So I think he's probably heartfelt in this. But when the, the bloke we had on, Stuart, earlier on this morning, Martin Chamberlain from the Secondary Principals Association, he blames you guys as much as he blames the Greens because you guys must have overseen this. You're all part of this. You're in it together. Oh, look, as far as... Look, I'll tell you my stance on this, to be honest. I think that uh, that state funding is for state schools. I think private funding... Uh, private schools are funded by people who can afford to send their kids there. I'm quite clear about this. I mean, I don't think we should be funding this. That's my personal view. But, you know, James, uh, he, he advocated for what he believed was a shovel-ready project that was going to create a whole lot of jobs in Taranaki. Which is true. Uh, it does, or will. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, he thought he was doing the right thing. In hindsight, when he's taken a look at this, he's admitted he made a mistake. I mean, oh. people do make mistakes. He right. says he feels terrible, and I genuinely believe him. He's a genuinely good ha guy. Mark, how yeah, much I, I, this goes on in government, though? He held the government to ransom but, yes. over a $3 billion that, dollar fund to get $12 million. And, and I think this is where the real difficult um, uh, situation for James is, is that he held them to ransom and said that uh, we, will not, we will not support um, advancing any of the other projects under the shovel ready when the country's in a situation we're fighting COVID uh, and we have to get these projects and those projects have to get started. So I think that's the real um, political issue that he has to face. And by the way, I think that Labor does have some culpability in this because that has to be signed off by Grant Robertson and Chris Hipkins. So yeah, they acquiesced. You know, yes. No, it doesn't. It doesn't, doesn't have, have to be signed, signed off by Chris Hipkins. Um, it was it's it, got to be signed off by in Grant. Terms of this, it, no, it was uh, actually Phil Twyford and, um, and Shane no Jones who did these say projects. No more. It was Phil Twyford, was what, it? What I will say, Mike, you know, you talk about holding people to account on this. Um, Judith is still talking about bringing in international students at a time when we're fighting to keep COVID out of this no, country. No, she said I mean, she's going to bring in international students when it's safe. Yeah, but they've been talking about bringing in international... When I say they, the National Party, have been talking about bringing in international students for the last three months. It's so a fantastic pivot, to Stuart, Stuart, but you've got me interested. China, here's, here's my point on the international students. Look to Australia. They're bringing in international students into South Australia right now. You want to look at Australia as an example of how to do things well? I mean, you know... They're having debts in Victoria. Uh, New South Wales is, uh, is looking at no, another sort No, that's not Australia. That's Daniel Andrews in Victoria, which is separate to the rest of Australia, which is doing great. Yeah, but what we want to do, Mike, is make sure that New Zealanders are protected. You bring in 
you bring in people from across the border who aren't Kiwis. Uh, when we are safe, when we have got a vaccine, when we've got things sorted, we are not at that point yet. And yet the National Party keeps going on about bringing in... I think you'd be surprised at how many people China. support the idea. Mark, do you broadly... Say, I mean, if you could do it now, what's yeah. wrong with bringing... Say, say you've got 100 people coming in from wherever. Pick China or Korea or whatever yeah. you like. Yeah. You put them in isolation. They come out the other side. They've been tested mm-hmm. negative. They're back at school. Where's the problem? Yeah, well, we have to get ourselves into that position. It's important for our future, without a doubt. But I think that Nashi just hit the nail on the head. He said that... We can't look at doing that until we're sorted, until we've got a vaccine. The reality of it is we need to start planning that there may not be a vaccine around for two years. Yeah. And actually, he's right, the border is not sorted. Once we get the border sorted, once the public can have a high level of confidence that the government's able to manage that, whoever's in government, I hope that we are, um, then we can start looking at re-kicking um, the economy in areas like international students. Right now, the public don't have confidence to be able to do that. They do feel like there'd be too much risk because the border isn't sorted out. Mike, just very quickly on the shovel-ready projects, the the thing that I find highly offensive about the Green School uh, approval too is that I put up Penlink in my electorate, which is a big infrastructure project. I I believe it's around public safety because it's a whole lot of people that live on the peninsula. They've only got one way on, one way off, and it would provide enormous relief to our transport network. I put that into the house. Yeah, but it's a road though, isn't it? Yeah, it's a road. Why didn't you make it a cycleway? Yeah, well, it's... (laughs) <laughs> it's not going to be a cycle, way, but, but the point is, the point is, I put that into the House. Labor, the Greens and New Zealand First all voted it down, wouldn't support it. It's ready to go. Just to wrap the Shaw thing, uh, Stuart, do you reckon it's going to damage the Greens and they're in trouble getting to 5%? No, look, I, I don't know. I mean, I, haven't, I don't know what's going on within the Green Party in terms of their membership. I think they've got a very strong base. I think James is seen by the vast majority of people, Greens and others, is a man of integrity. Uh, so, you know, as mentioned, he's he's uh, made a mistake. He's got nearly seven weeks to, to fix that, uh, and I think he will because people see him for who he is. What do you reckon, Mark? I think they are in trouble because they are on the 5% threshold, and um, going into the election on, on E-Day, you always see that um, the Greens, in fact, most parties take a, a drop of 1-2% yep. um, uh, on terms of what they're polling, so I think they are in trouble. Here's my prediction. Hey, Mike, Mike, Mike can, can I just mention something about the border that Mitch said? Yep. Hey, we have to keep in mind that 40,000 Kiwis have returned home and gone through isolation, and not one person is allowed to leave isolation without well, not now. Uh, a, ne- a negative test. Not so after Thelma and Louise. That, that, well, you know, that we've, that we've fixed that. But the thing is, is that... that um, it's not slowing to a trickle. There's a hell of a lot more Kiwis who are well, looking... That's a very good question. We were supposed to chase that up. Do you know the numbers recently? Are they still flooding into the country? They're still flooding into the country, and from all over the world, actually, because they're looking from where they are and seeing New Zealand as, as the safe haven that it is and seeing how well Jacinda has managed this. And admit it, Mike, Jacinda has done a very good job, admit it. And, uh, and saying, we want to come home. And they're coming home... We're and, coming home you know, to Jacinda. I'm sitting here in Knightsbridge and I'm going, oh, Jacinda's calling me. I've got to get home from London. No, but it's not Jacinda who's calling them. It's their parents who are saying, come home. We are in a safe haven. We're looking at what's going on in the UK. Mm, come you. home. I tell you what, tell you, here's, here's my but, thinking, but, but Mark. No one is allowed to leave. No one is allowed to leave menace isolation. But what, here's my concern care. about the border. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mark. We still don't know what happened for Level 3. We don't know what happened with this community cluster. We cannot shave. I think it's the border. I think we all know it's the border because it wasn't the community. They still haven't nailed down that it was what part of the border, which means we don't know. We're not going back there again, do we? Yeah, I, I've never felt from day one that the border um, has been safe. I think that the government still, and I keep saying, is operating a contingency type mindset with hotels scattered everywhere. I just don't believe that that is a sustainable model, and I believe that we'll have breaches in the future, and we just can't afford to do that. We do have an opportunity to throw every government resource um, at this, work with the private sector to make sure that our border remains absolutely um, airtight in terms of letting this virus in. So, so, Mitch, you would rather have the private sector guard our hotels than the army. And keeping in mind, you're a former Minister of Defence, so you know how good the men and women of our, uh, of our armed services are. They are fantastic. They're well-disciplined and they do an awesome job. I think the army do a better job than the private sector, to be honest. But, so, you know, sorry. you said earlier on that you want to bring students in. We can do this. And you, you say that, um, you know, we no, haven't no, got the capacity to, to no, manage Kiwis. The government's got, a, got, a, got the lead role to play, but I'm telling you now that it, that can be very well supported by the private sector as well. So it's, very, and it's, it's a common model around the world now where governments outsource because actually the private sector are often more efficient.
Uh, and, well, and well, you've got, you got both as far as I can work out. Stuart, let me ask sure. you about uh, Sam Morgan, who doesn't like you guys anymore, buried among people who are useless deep inside ministries who can't just deliver this. He's right, isn't he? No, he's not right at all. You know, what Sam is suggesting is that every Kiwi, you know, man, woman, child, wanders around with a lanyard and that we're going to get away with that. I mean, you know, people who have to wear lanyards with their work struggle with that. The app we've got at the moment, uh, with, you know, every man and his dog carries a phone. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm assuming 99.9% of your listeners, Mike, uh, log on to their, uh, to their tracing app and look at the QR code wherever they go. It's working well. You ask people to wear a lanyard wherever they go, Just, I just think Sam's dreaming. All right. What do you say, just, Mike? No, I just think that, and we've announced this in our border policy, that there's an opportunity to use Bluetooth technology uh, to allow to uh, bolster and strengthen a track and trace system, which fundamentally is going to be critically important for us as a country over the next um, 12 to 24 months. Good on you guys. Nice to catch up. You have a good one. We'll see you next Wednesday. Mark Mitchell, Stuart Nash, Wednesday mornings, exclusive to the Mike Hosking Breakfast, day 22.